Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to our young channel. Today with us is the spacecraft operating engineer from NASA, Ms. Nagin Cox. Ms. Cox, thanks for coming. Welcome to the Eastern Province. Thank you so very much for the invitation. I'm honored to be here. Uh, first of all, I bet uh, everyone is interested to hear your story of success, the road to NASA. So please tell us. Uh, well, I have been very fortunate to work at NASA, NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory in Pasadena, California, for about 25 years now. And it's a childhood dream come true for me because I've been interested in working at the Jet Propulsion Laboratory since I was 14 on robotic space exploration. Great, interesting. So uh, today you are here in Saudi Arabia. I believe you uh, came in a very fitting time. There's a lot has been going on in, uh, when it comes to space projects. Saudi Arabia launched uh, recently the first satellite uh, of communication, SG, uh, S1, and also uh, there was our Saudi Space Commission. And uh, the president of that commission also had his personal experience with space. I'm talking about the first Arab astronaut, Prince Sultan bin uh, Salman. All of this leads me to a point I want to hear your comments on, and that is uh, the nature of cooperation between NASA and Saudi Arabia, and also your hopes for it. Uh, well, that's a, a wonderful question about the future. I do first want to thank the U.S. Embassy, the U.S. State Department, for the invitation that brought me to Saudi Arabia, and I've had the opportunity to visit Jeddah and Riyadh and now Dahran and Dhamam, and uh, it has given me an opportunity to be exposed to some of what you're talking about in terms of the amazing changes that are happening now in Saudi Arabia, including that first satellite and really being here right when the uh, SSC, the Saudi Space Commission, is, is kind of coming into being. And in terms of collaboration, there's actually already collaboration going on uh, between NASA and uh, Saudi Arabia. The first you mentioned was the astronaut, the prince, when he was on the space shuttle in 1985, that the International Space Station, the space shuttle, all of those have been examples of cooperation between NASA, ESA, other space agencies, and the astronauts from all over the world that have had a chance uh, that were able to participate. And now in the more near term, there are examples of collaboration that exist right now between NASA and Saudi Arabia. There are joint projects that are going on with uh, uh, Caxed, Caxed in Riyadh, where there are some remote sensing research that's going on, that where the uh, researchers are from both the California Institute of Technology, or JPL, that connection, as well as that, uh, that university. And, and, and that's an example of the kind of things that just happen because the scientists are, know each other and want to exchange ideas. I think collaboration happens at so many different levels. Right. I believe earlier this week there was a discussion about pan-Arab space cooperation with the UAE having their Hope Mission to Mars next year. So many, so many good things happening. And not just at the national level, but again, when scientists just meet each other and engineers at conferences, that organic way of saying, oh, wait, you're working on this? So am I. This is an area that we can, uh, that we should exchange ideas. I think collaboration is, is, is best when it's at all different levels. Great. Speaking of the collaboration levels, what about uh, the Saudi training chances in NASA so far? Can you tell us some numbers or stories about that? The, sorry, the Saudi training opportunities at NASA. So at JPL or in the human exploration area? Um, okay. We can talk about both. Um, so on the human side, I, I'm actually not very familiar with that end of things in terms of, you know, what the opportunities are for the upcoming, for with the space station and some of the upcoming a areas. I am, I, I do know that, that the the selection of astronauts from around the world is is basic it's not it's not just a nasa decision right these uh, the space station is international right it has more to do with the with the cooperation and and also from a science side it's also like i believe when the when the prince went up on the space shuttle it was partially it was also of course he was a saudi astronaut but he was an expert in what that what that space shuttle mission was doing and I think that's also important is on the one hand, we want to see inclusivity uh, around the world of, of astronauts from different areas. Uh, but we also, you know, there's also a mission to be done. 
And so it's important that, that the manifest, so to speak, of who goes where is also based on, on expertise. Now, in the robotic space exploration, which is the area that I work on, that's uh, the example that I mentioned already is one where there's a collaboration with Saudi based on, again, based on the skill set. But, you know, sometimes I get asked this question about, are there any Moroccans working at NASA? Are there any people from this country? And, you know, there's, as a, as a, as a general engineer at JPL, if I, because in preparation for some of these visits that the State Department has sponsored, I sometimes try to look that up because I know I'll get asked. And honestly, there's like no way to tell. We don't keep track of where people are from. It's not like there's a database that I can go look up who, who works for NASA is from, the, from Saudi Arabia. We don't even tend to know that about people. We just know, are you a good engineer? Are you a, you know, it's just, are you good at your job? It's not really important where someone's from. Ladies and gentlemen, we'll be back to you soon. اليوم تنطلق باثنتي عشرة صفحة متخصصة جديدة. اليوم لكل الوطن. Welcome back. And uh, so, Ms. Cox, after the launching of uh, the Saudi Vision 2030, there was uh, an opening of a lot of doors and uh, bringing a lot of opportunities to Saudi females. Um, I bet a good number are watching at the moment, so uh, I would love to hear your comments on that. Any words you want to tell them? I think, well, first of all, I feel very fortunate to be here at, at the time when so much is changing, and I've heard so much about Vision 2030. I personally am, you know, so uh, gratified to see the opportunities opening up for women. I think the, you know, in terms of all of the, the options that are there for them being able to drive, things like that, that when, when, when I, from my perspective, I think about, you know, again, the Saudi Space Commission and the HOPE mission and so many things that are happening in my field in the space area. And I, I just, I, I can't even imagine that those opportunities wouldn't include women, right? When, when you jump in to some of these big engineering challenges, it seems unfathomable that it would be one part of the population. Right. It's it's not about whether you're a man or a woman. Honestly, you know, when I'm involved in hiring for NASA, it's not like it's not like, again, that we look. It's whether or not you can do the job. And so I think the the message, you know, that that I would like to share from my own experience with uh, the women of Saudi Arabia is, you know, do what's important to you, do what you're passionate about. And there are so many challenges that, requ that are enabled by a math and science background, by engineering and science, and many of them are already very qualified. And I think that, you'll, that we'll see that as the doors open. A lot of, um, there's quite a, a number of women who are involved in the HOPE mission. That's something that NASA is working on uh, with the UAE. And there are, you know, whenever I see, uh, like we like to watch, you know, encourage our colleagues the same way they encourage us. And if we follow each other on Twitter, et cetera, there are plenty of times when the mission announcements are being made by the women who are involved in the HOPE mission. And I'm sure the same will be true uh, as the Saudi Space Commission gets going. Ms. Cox, thanks a lot for this privilege. It has been nice having you. And I hope you enjoy your uh, visit to Saudi Arabia and have a safe trip back home. Thank you very much, Shukran. Ladies and gentlemen, again, this is Mandar Warthan from Al-Yom Channel. Thanks for being with us. And I'll until next time, good night and good luck.